Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we were talking about wing planform geometry and how to find the mean aerodynamic chord and the aerodynamic center for a given wing, right? So, this is consider your fuselage reference line. Assume that this is a wing. A semi span of a wing, and you have a root cord and you have a tip cord. And this be V by 2, which is semi span. So we have defined some non-dimensional parameters called aspect ratio here which is B square by S where S is the wing planform area and lambda is the taper ratio, the aspect ratio and taper ratio. Lambda is equals to CT by CR. Where CR is the root chord and CT is the tip chord. And we also witness that for a rectangular wing, aspect ratio is this B by C, and the respective surface area will be B into sorry, planform area will be B into C bar. And for rectangular wing, taper ratio is one because CT is equals to CR for a rectangular. Okay, so this is for rectangular wing. And for a triangular wing, What we have is aspect ratio is equals to b square by s and area of a triangle is half into span into height is cr right and lambda taper ratio is ct by cr which is zero for a proper triangular wing. Okay. Now, the main important thing is at a later stage, we will re we'll represent the entire wing by means of mean aerodynamic chord and the aerodynamic center with the respective forces and moments acting at the aerodynamic center. So, while performing stability analysis and while sizing the wing and say for this particular wing, what should be the corresponding tail size, right? If you are designing a conventional aircraft, right? So, during that process, we represent both wing and tail by means of this mean aerodynamic chord. So, how do you find mean aerodynamic chord? MAC is C bar is equals to two third CR into one plus lambda plus lambda square by one plus lambda, right? That gives mean aerodynamic. Cord. 
temperature this is your c bar and the y location of this c bar y m a c is given by v by 6 into 1 plus 2 lambda by 1 plus lambda okay so if consider a rectangular wing what will be the c bar what is lambda lambda is 1 in that case so for rectangular wing c bar is equals to two third into c r is c for a rectangular wing we have lambda is equals to 1 substitute 1 in this equation so what you have c bar is equals to c right which is the CR and CT in that case. What about for a triangular wing? Two thirds of the root CR, root chord, right? So, for a triangular wing, it is C bar is equals to two third of C. With this mid aerodynamic chord, how to find the aerodynamic center? So, aerodynamic center of wing. So, we are talking about a subsonic UAV, right. So, we can safely assume the C bar, this AC aerodynamic center will be approximately at 25 percent of mean aerodynamic chord, right. So, once you know the mean aerodynamic chord, you can project this mean aerodynamic chord onto your root chord, right. You can actually project this mean aerodynamic chord onto the root chord and take 25 percent of this root mean aerodynamic chord to locate the aerodynamic center. So, since you know the root chord, so say this is your root chord, and you know C bar, right? Say this is your C bar. So, what you can do is you can find what is your mean aerodynamic chord x of AC that represents aerodynamic center of the with respect to the leading edge of this root chord right x a c is equals to so x a c is equals to c r minus c bar plus 0.25 times of c bar this is c bar c r minus 0.75 c bar so, this is the relation with which you can calculate or you can locate your aerodynamic center with respect to leading edge of this root chord. So, we are also talking about span wise distribution of aerofoils, right. So, this is my wing. Now, let us say this is my CR or root chord, the line connecting the leading edge and the trailing edge of the root. Say this is my center line or fuselage reference line. Okay. Now, consider a span wise location Y or say the tip, consider the tip aerofoil which is at a distance b by 2 with respect to this root chord or from the fuselage reference line. Okay. Now, if the tip aerofoil, let us say I project this tip aerofoil onto the root, if this tip aerofoil which is present here 
Sweet. Okay. If the cord of this tip aerofoil is above the cord of this root aerofoil, right? Then we call it as positive geometric twist. Say if this tip aerofoil is below this. If the cord of the tip, tip pair of oil, if it, if it is oriented in this direction, say if this is your tip pair of oil, so say if this is your cord, and say if this, if the cord is below this root cord, right? If the if the angle is below the root cord, then you call this as negative twist. Negative twist. Okay, so this is basically you are giving a physical rotation to an aerofoil at the tip. Right? You can have a post uh, constant twist as well as variable twist wings. Right? Okay. Now say at a spanwise location. Okay, this is B by two. Say let that location be Y. Right. So at this location, say if this, if the shape of this aerofoil is different compared to the shape of the root cord aerofoil, that means say this is a cambered aerofoil, and at that particular location, I started using a symmetric aerofoil. Right. So although the cord line of this, of the aerofoil present at this location, is in the same plane as the cord line of this root cord, right? So, but the profile changes because I am changing the airfoil and the corresponding upper and lower coordinates of this particular airfoil are different compared to that of the airfoil that we have used at the root, right? So, because of this, although there is no physical rotation that is given, because of the change in the airfoil, the wing looks twisted, right? You call it as aerodynamic twist, right? right? So, aerodynamic twist is to change the lifting properties along the spanwise location of this wing, right? Let us look at a wing here. It is a rectangular wing. In our previous lecture, we saw a tapered wing about the mid, mid cord and in this case, it is a pure rectangular wing. You can see, so this is the side view you are looking at, right? So, these, these particular structural members are known as ribs and you have spars here, right? So, this is the skeleton of a typical wing. It is about a meter span. So, let us consider a rectangular wing. Okay. Let us consider a rectangular wing. Now, at each and every location you have airfoils. Let us say there is no twist and there is no geometric as well as aerodynamic twist. So, we have same aerofoils oriented in a similar way, like the orientation of this is exactly what we have it as root cord, right. That means the cord of each aerofoil lies in the same plane. Now, we witnessed earlier like there will be pressure distribution on aerofoil, right? Say what will be the pressure distribution here, say, when there is flow,
you have pressure distribution here right and say on this wing again you will have a similar pressure distribution because the chord is not changed right so at each and every location you have similar pressure distribution Now, you will have a resultant component of this at each and every point. Right. Here say, maybe somewhere here, somewhere here. Since it is not tapered, it will be lying, it, it will lie on the same perpendicular plane to the wingspan, right. Now, if you look at from this direction or from here, what you can say is, say, if this is my wing, for a rectangular wing, the lift distribution will be something like this. Right. So, we can also talk about lift distribution along the span wise location. Right. So, we have lift distribution at a particular cross section that is because of the flow or overfall, right? And we can talk about lift distribution along the span wise location, right? And it mainly depends upon the platform of the wing, shape of this wing, right? Now, see, don't you see these are the tip, this is the tip, you will have a wing symmetric about this fuselage reference line, say this is your FRL. This is your FRL, okay, fuselage reference line, right. So, you will have a symmetric wing and with the symmetric distribution. But what happens at these tips? So, this is the tip of this wing, right? And you have a tip aerofoil there. And similar to that of any other aerofoil along the span, span this tip aerofoil will also have this pressure distribution, right? So, you know you have a greater suction on an aerofoil, you have a greater suction on the upper surface compared to that of lower surface. That means, you can say low pressure on upper surface and higher pressure on bottom surface. So, due to what happens, will there be a flow that, so there is a sudden ending, right? The wing is ending abruptly here. Now, what happens at that particular point? The flow from the bottom surface will try to curl. Yeah curl towards the upper surface at that particular location. Now, when you look at the tips, right, which are the extremes of the wing, so, say so this is my fuselage reference line, okay, and near the tips, when there is a flow, so on this aerofoil as well, there is a greater suction on the upper surface and comparatively lesser suction on the lower surface, right? So, which means there is a higher pressure on the lower surface and lower pressure on the upper surface. Now, since this wing is abruptly ending, what happens? The flow near the tips, right, will try to curl from the bottom surface to higher surface, top surface, right? That is from uh, higher pressure to lower pressure region, right? So, this curling will actually affect the span wise flow, right, will actually induce the span wise flow. Ideally, the flow has to be along the chord, right. But this curling due to the finiteness of, fine, due to a finite wing will induce a span wise component of velocity to this flow, right. So, how to model this? How to model this phenomenon? So, lifting line theory. So, lifting line theory talks about lift distribution along the span of a wing, right. So, this whole setup like the wing and the trailing edge, uh, trailing vertexes are replaced by a bound vertex.
and associated with two trailing vertex. So, how the flow will be at this particular tip? So, the wing is replaced by a bound vertex and at the tip what happens how the flow direction direction of the flow will be from bottom to top right the, the, the flow velocity direction will be from bottom to top in counterclockwise direction. So, at this tip it will be along the clock it will be in the clockwise direction right. So, and these two vertex are connected by a start starting vertex. So, this entire vertex architecture that represents the lift distribution on the wing is known as horseshoe vertex. Right. Horseshoe vertex. So, this horseshoe vertex is used to model the lift along the span, right or model the lift of a finite wing here. This vertex architecture, right. so let us consider this bound vertex, what it is going to, how this is going to influence the flow over the wing, right. Let us take the side view here. So, this bound vertex will induce an upwash ahead of the wing and downwash behind the wing. So, assume that it tries to push the flow down behind the wing and push the flow up ahead of the wing, right, makes the flow move up, right. Whereas, this trailing vertex will create a downwash along the span wise throughout the span of the wing, right. So, this combination, this upwash and downwash combination this wash and downwash combination will result in a flow field something similar to this right so this F, this alters the local angle of attack at each and every span wise location right now what happens is let us consider a span wise location along the wing let this be the angle of attack uh, i mean aerofoil which is at an angle of attack v infinity this is a direction of the actual flow, right, overall flow. Now, what happens is due to this downwash, so effectively this angle of attack decreases, right. There is something called induced angle of attack. Right? So these two are similar. Right? This is the local velocity, direction of local velocity, direction in which and this will be your say this is my actual angle of attack and this is my effective angle of attack or the local angle of attack, right. So, this is this quantity, this is the downwash and both are same, these two are same, right. So, this is the downwash which is affecting the flow at a particular 
span wise location right so that causes an induced angular fatigue alpha i now so the local lift will be perpendicular to this so the actual lift direction say this is my so lift of the overall aircraft right overall, overall wing which is perpendicular to the free stream velocity right but the local velocity is at an angle alpha i with respect to this free stream velocity right so the local lift will be perpendicular to v infinity local so this will be the component say say this is the local velocity and the corresponding local lift alpha lift at that particular location local lift right and this is your drag right which is acting along v infinity now this local lift has a contribution along yeah along the actual lift of the aircraft or the overall lift of the aircraft as well as along the drag overall drag of this aircraft so what is this cdi let us say is the coefficient of induced drag right is equals to cl is the coefficient of lift at that location right into so this is your alpha i right this into sin of alpha i since this induced angles will be very small what you can assume is cl into alpha i induced angle of attack okay induced angle of attack is contributing induced drag right so the lift generated here is also contributing towards drag right so this this is the penalty that we are paying that we'll discuss very soon cdi is equals to cl into alpha i right so according to this lifting line theory this alpha i is equals to cl by pi e alpha i or the lift and induced angle of attack is related by alpha i is equals to cl by pi e r where e is the oswald's oswald's efficiency factor okay and ar is the aspect ratio which is b square by s right now substitute this alpha i here in this induced track so cdi is equals to cl square divided by pi e yeah. so the lift also contributes towards induced drag right due to the finite aspect ratio so for a 2d wing it is infinite aspect ratio is infinite so induced drag is almost negligible there what we need to talk is what is drag we already defined it's a component of resultant aerodynamic force which is acting along the free stream velocity right say this is your uh, this is your aircraft this is your aircraft and you have thrust which helps the aircraft to move at the required velocity and you have weight and say this is your v infinity and say this is your fuse last reference line or the reference line and this is your alpha what you have is lift and drag as aerodynamic forces now this drag is a component of resultant aerodynamic force acting along this v infinity right or parallel to free stream which is defined as half rho v square s into cd right so this is the dynamic pressure times the planform area and non dimensional drag coefficient so this cd is given as c 
CD naught can be expressed as CD naught plus K C L square, which is known as drag polar. Drag polar. Right. So this K C L square is nothing but C D I, where K is equals to where k is equals to 1 by pi e yeah so here cl square by pi e yeah right so cd is a summation of something called profile drag or lift independent drag and lift induced drag so you call induced drag okay so this is how the induced drag is related right with respect to with cl and the aspect ratio yeah we will look at what is this oswald's efficiency factor we'll come back to that right so this profile drag again is due to skin friction since we are in moving in a fluid and fluid is in contact with the surface of or the skin of this airfoil or the exposed surface of the aircraft so it has some fluid friction so that is known as skin friction skin friction drag plus pressure drag due to flow separation so pressure drag due to flow separation right and as you go to higher velocities there is something also called wave drag right that comes into picture yeah and uh, in this lecture in this lectures we will be going we are going to discuss only about low speed uh, uavs so there is no need for us to discuss much about this wave track here right so you have cd not plus cl square by pi e here right so these are profile drag coefficient in fact please add this induced drag coefficient so this induced drag and profile drag coefficient induced drag and profile drag coefficients multiplied by half rho v square s will give you the corresponding profile drag and induced drag right okay so cd or drag is equals to half rho v square yes into cd is equals to half rho v infinity square s yes, into cd not plus k cl square this equals to half rho v infinity square s yes, into cd not plus half rho v infinity square s k into cl square right so this particular term is profile drag plus induced drag now we have expressed cd as a function of cl right here cd is equal to cd not plus k cl square now we can see it's a quadratic function now let us plot cd with cl at cl is equal to 0 we have something called cd not Typically, this is how CD versus CL plot look like, right? So there is something also called drag bucket, right? Where the CD value almost remains constant for a range of CL values, right? So that that particular regime for which the CD remains 
constant with CL is known as drag bucket. So, since we mentioned drag bucket, it is worth discussing about various aerofoils, various series of aerofoils, right? So, it may not exist explicitly for all the aerofoils, but there are some aerofoils called lamina series aerofoils where you can see such a drag bucket, right? And let us see how CD varies with angle of attack. So, this is 0, at angle of attack 0, you have CD, and CD increases with angle of attack on either side, right? So, this particular point is CD when alpha is equals to 0. Right? This is not CD, not. CD when alpha is equals to 0. So you have to careful. You have to be careful about using this CD when alpha is equals to zero. CD when CL is equals to zero. Let us look at airfoils. Right. We'll again get back to that uh, drag polar. Meanwhile, let us look at various aerofoil series that are uh, I mean, for which the experimental data is available. So NACA. Is National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics have developed various series of aerofoils and they have tested these aerofoils for different Reynolds number, right? So the data for CL variation with angle of attack, CD variation with angle of attack, as well as the pitching moment coefficient variation with angle of attack is available, right? Now, ultimately what we want, the wing to generate a sufficient lift, right? Sufficient lift to overcome the weight. Now, the plan form you will decide from the mission requirements, but you need to select the corresponding cross section as well, right? Called aerofoil selection. What we will do in this course is we will try to see what is the design CL, and from there we will try to get back, get to know what is the CL alpha of this wing, right? From the CL alpha of, from this CL alpha of wing, we will get to we will try to figure out what should be the aerofoil characteristics? What should be the CL alpha of aerofoil? So, to understand what is CL alpha of aerofoil, CD naught of aerofoil, right? And CM alpha of aerofoil or CM about aerodynamic center of aerofoil. So, we need to understand various series that are available, right? So, let us first consider a NACA 4, four series aerofoil, which is a famous example, right? NACA 2412, where the first digit 2 talks about maximum camber in hundreds of chord that is equals to 2 percent of chord or percentage of chord 0 0.02 of C. Let us say if you consider an aerofoil say this is my aerofoil if this is a NACA 2412 airfoil, then let us say if this is 1 meter cord, then the maximum camber that I have is about 20 centimeters, right? And the second digit 4 represents the location of this maximum camber. in ten, tens of chord or location you will get when you multiply this second digit by C by 10 that is equals to 0.4 C, right? Approximately at 40 percent of chord. This maximum camber will present approximately at 40 percent of this chord, right? Say this is your chord line joining leading edge and the trailing edge and say at 40 percent you have this maximum camber. And last two digits gives the information about maximum thickness of a four digit aerofoil. Maximum thickness in percentage of cord.
that equals to 12 divided by 100 into C, 0.12 C. Is that 12 percent thick? So, if you have 1 meter cord, you will have 12 centimeters thickness, right? All you can get is maximum thickness of 12 centimeters. So, you can design your spar accordingly. And say if you want to accommodate a fuel tank in the wing or if you want to accommodate batteries in the wing, then you have to keep a upper cap on the battery size or the fuel tank size. And you see a 5 series airfoil. So, example is Naka 230 So, the first digit here, 2, first digit gives the information about maximum camber in percentage of C that equals to 2 by 100 into C, 0 0.02 C. So, the first digit will also talk about design CL, right. So, CL design is a design lift coefficient is equals to 2 multiplied by 3 by 2 into 1 by 10. So, so 3 by 2 into 1 by 10, right, is a factor that you need to multiply with this first digit of this 5 series zero four to get to know about what is the design CL of this airfoil. And now, 30 represents the location of maximum camber. So, these two digits together location represents location of maximum camber multiplied by One by two into hundred, one by hundred. Right. Multiplied by one by two to one by hundred of cord. So the location of maximum camber for this example is thirty into half point one five C. So if you consider a meter one, if you consider cord as one meter, that is one meter airfoil, then the maximum camber lies at approximately 15 centimeters from the leading edge, right? And last two, do, two digits gives you the information about maximum thickness. In percentage of Okay. That is C by hundred. So the maximum thickness is twelve percent of C. Right. Now there is another series called six series aerofoil also known as laminar series aerofoil. So, example is 6 5 Four one eight. Okay. So you also find some other digit as a subscript, right? For this kind of error. So let us see what is the significance of the subscript here. Now the first digit six simply denotes the series of aerofoil. That means this aerofoil belongs to 6 series. Like six. 
series of f y right and five denotes the minimum pressure location location of minimum pressure in tens of cord so the minimum pressure when the flow is completely attached will be at 0.5 c bar or c 5 by 10 into c is a 0.5 c four talks about design cl design lift coefficient sorry intense right so design lift coefficient in then that is 0.4 is the design cl of this airfoil and 18 here talks about maximum thickness in percentage of cord is equals to 18 by 100 into c so it is approximately 18% of cord maximum thickness for this airfoil is 18% of cord now what does this subscript denotes right what is the significance so we have design cl right say if this is cl coming back to this drag polar cl and cd variation of cl and cd right okay now say this is my cl design in this case is about 0.4 this is the cl at which i need to fly yeah we'll talk about this design cl in the coming lectures right so but assume that this is the cl at which i need to fly right if i fly at a particular velocity and with this cl right i'll be able to generate enough lift that's the understanding of what enough lift to sustain the weight at that particular altitude so that's the understanding of this design cl for the time being right let us keep keep it up to that now so this design cl is achieved at a particular angle of attack we know cl is expressed as cl not plus cl alpha into alpha at that particular angle of attack so say if you by by um, somehow if you change the velocity right due to maybe a headwind or tailwind suddenly the aircraft velocity or the uav velocity is changed so because of which you need to again increase or decrease the cl depending upon the type of disturbance right or the cl has to be changed right so you you need to either trim at higher angle of attack bit higher angle of attack or bit lower angle of attack to achieve the respect to cl right but this particular series of airfoil if you look at this particular series of even though if you change your design cl to a limit no to a small limit within a small vicinity this cd will still remain same almost constant right so that particular regime where the cd remains constant with the even the cl changes or the alpha changes is known as drag bucket so here in this case it is like 0.4 is your design cl now so say this is your 0.4 now 3 here 3 by 10 is what 0.3 right 3 multiplied by 10 1 by 10 which is 0.3 like so you have cl design plus or minus 0.3 the cd remains constant cd remains almost constant so 0.1 to 0.7 of cl the cd almost remains constant here for this particular so this is this is the significance of this 
particular digit. Right. So, don't you find it in interesting? Like, you can increase L by D without increasing the drag. That means you can trim at higher angles of it. 